Okay, so there was a question about how is it that I make a funnel and a ball follow that. So this is actually similar to what we've already been covering in here. I'm um, actually going to make my life easier. I'm going to use a pipe. And I'm going to change my settings so now the thickness is maybe a 0.1. Okay. I'm going to select the top polygons here. Hold on, shift, pull up scale hold on shift pull up and let's scale that out some more now it is deforming these uh, in the sense that these are getting larger in scale so we can just double click on this edge loop and then scale that up a little bit more so it feels like it's re remaining at that shape okay so i have that going on i'm going to just scale these out so it feels like it's, it's kind of bowing there we go so you have a funnel Let's say we have a ball that goes into here and then rotates down into the bottom of it. How do we do that? Well, first thing I want to do is create a CV curve. And it's not going to make a lot of sense when we draw it out at first. We need to realize that it's going to be in 2D and then we, we got to shape it in 3D. So to do that, I'm going to click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. All right, now, let's see what I made. Probably a hot mess, we'll change this. So first thing I gotta do, right click, go to control vertex, we'll start with our first part, and we are going to basically deselect every other piece. Let's push it down, push it down. Push it down, and I, it's probably going to take a couple times of doing this, but you can kind of get the idea of what I'm, oh, that's why that's going a bit wonky. So I'm going to actually start the opposite way. I'm going to put it where I want it to be at the end, and then uh, start grabbing more of these. So I'm not going to 100% have this. Uh, refined. I'm just trying to quickly put this together and you can definitely do that and you can see it's gonna be a pretty quick way to make this effect so let's say that the ball starts maybe right here and maybe it's on well it's really fancy things called a shelf people have those usually in their fancy houses that hold things. Uh, we'll put it on a ramp. There we go. Alright, so I got something like this here. And I'm going to take a ball and put this here. Put this over here. We'll make it about that big. And I'm going to see if I can snap it to that start. So hold down the V key and move this over. Okay, now. I have the ball and this selected. Now under constraint and animation, we're gonna do a motion path, attached to motion path, and then now hit play. Whoa. Sound effects included. So that's how we would quickly make something like this. Now it may not look 100% the way it needs to, so we can adjust these things. If you don't like the way the path is currently going, we can right click, control vertex, modify those things or you'll even see that there is a, a spot in here um, underneath modeling curves we can start to modify how those are being um, the, uh, the the we can rebuild that so we can give more points to it um, we can smooth it out all that fun stuff so there's a lot of different ways and obviously this will look really different now but um, a lot of different ways that we can get a very easy motion going on. And remember, right now, how is the animation being applied in the graph editor? What's the default way? Not linear. What is it? It is, yes, it's curved in the sense that it's starting slow, speeding up, and then slowing down again. So we might want this last one not to be doing that. Maybe you want it to keep accelerating until it hits the ground. So let's see what that did. Slow and speeding up. 
So maybe that's what we want to do. Pretty cool. Okay. So we made our bucket of blood on a pulley. We made this thing. Let's hide that one. Okay. Now, conveyor belt. Ooh, how do we make that? Let's go into our um, NURBS primitives and make a circle. Now, I'm going to shape this. And to do that, I'm going to turn on symmetry. Some of you have done this accidentally. It'll say that right here. And by making the symmetrical, I can actually shape just one side. And it's going to allow for me to actually um, control both left and right sections of this. So pretty cool. So I'm going to say maybe this is what I want. Uh, let me just scale that part in a little bit more. And I'm going to bring both of these a little bit closer to this. Okay. So this is going to be my um, conveyor belt that I'll use for my path. Now I'm going to rotate this so it is up and down. So 90. And then I'm going to freeze it. So press that button or go to edit, delete by type history, and then also go into modify freeze transformations. So there's the freeze transformations, and then here's my delete history. So now here's this, and oh, that is one. Let me back up a little bit before I did that. Now let me freeze those. That was, that was intense. Um, now that I have this, I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Okay. Now, what is that? I guess I'm just not, not awake today. All right. Let's do that one last time, hopefully. Freeze and delete. All right. Now, we're going to make that cube. Shrink it down. And now, let's go into this thing called mash. Now, MASH is cool. We're going to press this button, and it's going to do all these things. We still have the original cube over here, but all of a sudden it made these things. These are instance geometry. That is a, ma uh, a mesh shape for MASH. And when we look at that in our um, attribute editor, you'll see that there's this mash distribute. Right now it's saying that I have 10. So let's bring that down to zero. Okay. I also want to change the distance to zero. I'm actually now, when I increase that number or decrease that number, you'll notice it doesn't matter. There's still just um, one of them showing up because I've changed the distance, right? So there's a lot of these, it's just we can't see them. Now, under the mash1 spot in the attribute editor, I can add this thing. So I'm going to left click on curve with that um, repro mesh created. I'm going to click add curve node. And all I have to do is middle mouse button, drag that NURB circle into the curves, and then let's increase my step so it goes all the way around. And let's see if caching is causing problems. It is. I'm going to hit the play button. <gasps> Ooh, that's kind of cool. So what this is doing for me, I increased my step. If the step wasn't increased, it's just going to look like this right now. So I have to make that go all the way around. So it's going to be at 1. My animation speed declares how fast that's moving. So if I reduce that and I, I hit play, that's a lot slower. Now, I know, I know. That's not, that looks like a tank tread. Correct. That's a good way to make tank treads. We can animate that speed and be able to change how that's moving. However, we can make this as a conveyor belt too. Now, you can't shape this geometry. It's instance geometry. It's not going to do anything. What we need to do is do that with this cube that's currently hidden. So when we select it over here, we can't see it. It's invisible. So if we hit Shift and H, you will unhide that hidden geometry. Now, you can also do under display, hide or show to hide stuff as well. So 
Control H will hide it and Shift H will show it. So now it's showing. I'm going to shape that. So I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to grab the top face and scale that in. Oh boy. Now I'm going to hide that again. So Control H to hide it and let's play. How cool is that? We have a conveyor belt that's moving and it's all being done by my mash node for the curve. So the speed of that is what's declaring that. So you have to increase your steps and then change the speed. If it's a lot faster, so we can crank that up, that's moving a lot faster, right? So now, how do we make things move across it? Well, let's just take a, a, a box. Put it on top. We'll start over here, maybe. And set a keyframe. And then let's see how long it takes to get from this point over to that side. So we'll, we'll um, hit play. Okay, so it's maybe around frame 75 that that one piece is going over to there. So let's go and move this over to there and then hit the um, S key to set a keyframe. Oh, why did it do that? Has to do with what we talked about earlier with Mr. Graph Editor. How is it started? So if our, if our um, conveyor belt is linear, it's a constant rate of motion. What's this doing? Starting off slow and then speeding up and then slowing down. So let's change that. We're going to go to Modify, and, or sorry, Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And what we're going to do in here is, let's grab those, make it linear. So we'll just press this button. Now let's, let's roll that beautiful footage again. <gasps> okay. So it looks like I'm a little bit off on my timing. So I'm going to cut that keyframe. And then let's say they go to 80. Now, still a little too slow. Shift, drag it forward, and let's see. Almost. So we had that. If this, I'm using this point right here as my marker. So I'm going to slide through. Okay, that's like, oh, I'm going the opposite direction. Well, I need more coffee. 65. Let's drag this over to 65. There we go. Let's see what this did. Oh, snap. We got ourselves a conveyor belt. Now, how do we make it look like it's falling off of that? Well, let's say at first, um, I'm just going to take all of these. So if I move these, don't worry, because this is still going to make sense um, for the conveyor belt. But if I move these so it's maybe at frame... Uh, 20 that this starts let's make the box at frame 1 be up in the air and then fall and when it falls do a little jump so just animate it in the air a little bit and then go back down there oh boy that's way more of a happy box than I needed okay so it's falling down, it's going to land, and then uh, let's have it fall off. So it's going over here, maybe at around uh, 87. And it didn't set a keyframe. I'm going to turn on my auto key so that way I can... Uh, move this quicker so maybe it around here there's that so and then maybe got to get it over that bump so I'll give a little bit of a rotate and then move it up and over and then it can hit the ground so we'll give it a little bit of a bounce when it hits so up in the air and I'll also
also move it forward a bit and tilt. So now, boom, and have it fall and lay down. So we'll zero out our rotation on this and on this we'll do, let's say, actually let's do that and that and then give it a rotation here. So, all right, so let's say that that was the end of this. So now we have a box coming from the top, hitting play, boop, boop, and all right, that looks like garbage when it hits the ground, but you can see that this is uh, a pretty fast way. Now, it's going to take some practice, but look at this. I just made a whole part of a Rube Goldberg machine where maybe now when this thing does that, let's bring in this thing. And yes, I have to change when this starts, but uh, I'm just lining this up. So I'm going to get that into position. So maybe there's a shelf. And I'm going to get rid of that shelf and move that over something like that. Okay, so now I'm going to move these over here. Control vertex, change that, and we'll change this so it's on here. All right, so I know this is going to start moving way earlier than it needs to. However, that's an easy thing to do um, to change that. If I know that this box is going to end at frame, let's say 98. Also, my this obviously doesn't make any sense yet. Um, the ball should be much larger too. So um, let's just say at frame 98, that's when this. Um, a funnel needs to take place for what it's doing. So uh, let me start, let me change my start position. So it's going to go over here. So when it starts, it'll be there. And I also need to make it so it's obviously on top of the, the thing. Um, so from here, we can have it start to roll down. And let's change when that starts. We said it was going to be at 98. I'm going to go into my animation graph editor and let's try to find that so let's see where is that that's going to be underneath my ball so we saw how that works that's going to be uh just a two keys that are, are making this entire ball go down that tube so we'll start that at 98 so right now the start time is one holding down shift middle mouse button drag let's get that over to let's say 97 and 98. So that's where that marker is right now. And so now, obviously things need to be fixed, but you can have that start at a different time period. So now, or uh, time or frame. So let's see what we got. So this is playing backwards, which is fun, but wrong. Here we go, hitting play. There it goes on our conveyor belt, and it's going to fall off, and yes, I should change how that impact happens, but it's starting off another piece. This is how those chains can get that going. Cool. If anyone else has other things you want to see, please tell me, write me an email or ask, and we will continue to do these little mini demos.